my name is Sue Siegel, and I am Chief Innovation Officer at GE and CEO of GE Ventures. Great. Well, thanks very much for coming here. Why are you here at the GCBI Summit 2018? Funny that you would ask that question. Um, and it's very obvious when you look at, there's almost 700 corporate VCs here, and uh, actually some entrepreneurs, some of the financial VCs are also here, and you also have innovation officers because... When you start to think about what you guys have created in terms of pulling together this body of corporate venture capitalists and the importance of the skill set that it's bringing to bear in terms of corporate strategy, it's pretty remarkable. And you don't get a chance to really convene and exchange best practice, potential deals, understand the various trends, and hear how other corporates are thinking about challenges that we all have. So for all those reasons, it's just a great, great venue and a convening that you guys have pulled off. Well, we're delighted to hear. Thank you, Sue. Can you give a sense, obviously, you newly promoted up to the Chief Innovation Officer as well as CEO of GE Ventures. Can you give a sense of the report card, what you've been up to? <laughs> um, so, yes, I've, I've taken on the role of Chief Innovation Officer, and, and I just want to take an opportunity of one does that only when the team has done so well. And it's it's... A remarkable team, frankly. And it's many of the activities that the team is doing, has been doing, and will continue to propel forward in terms of the key innovation that can happen in a, in a corporation. One of the things that we did differently was really to be embedded in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And we did that starting out with investing in startups, very common with corporate venture. Then beyond that, we said, we need to really make those startups successful, and we set up our various programs to develop things that could help startups really grow and partnerships that could help them grow. And really making sure that that kind of connectivity, both with portfolio company partnerships within GE and portfolio company partnerships outside of GE, that type of sharing of learning of what a new technology is or a new business model is or the perspectives they have on the industry that are so disruptive is incredibly powerful for corporations. And then when you think about what else is happening is, you know, we progressed to become a corporate venture capital firm that also created new codes. We identified a problem area we either had a technology within GE or intellectual property in GE. We had entrepreneurs that we worked with as EIRs. We had a lot of um, real talent as it relates to the actual investors who had come from financial VCs previously. And we were able to create a number of different companies to attack a problem, be tip of spear for GE, and actually now have syndicated most of them. We've done seven of them in the past two and a half years, which is quite remarkable when you think about it. Across healthcare, across oil and gas, across energy, and in it soon to launch something around aviation. So when you start to think about that type of power of innovation, it's remarkable. And the corporation has stood up and said, we need more of this. And then the other part I would say is, more and more, innovation is partnering with the entrepreneurial ecosystem, with your R&D um, prowess internally, and bringing them together in a way that you can create very new solutions with new business models. And because we've been able to bring together the respective talent and then partner out internally and externally and meld that to the power of creation, it's been, you know... We knew it was a risk, but it's, it's actually worked. <laughs> and now we've got to scale them. And that's the next challenge, for, I think, for all of us, is how do you take small startup partnered with big co, how do you make it scale in a way that actually drives impact? And that's a really exciting possibility for us. You mentioned impact at the end. It was one of the sort of... Your great gift in some ways to capture the zeitgeist last year is the sort of time is now, this year is the sort of heroes of impact in your keynote. Can you just say what you mean by that? What is this discipline of corporate venture capital and how do you see the industry going forward? Yeah, you know, uh, 
<laughs> when I think about what's happening in corporate venture capital now, it's, there is a real growth mindset, if you'd like, that we bring to the equation. We bring the skill set of venture capitalists and understanding what it means to identify a problem, apply business models associated to it, develop milestone-based funding, so there's scarcity value in terms of dollars, and then really be able to put the right governance in place and let it run quickly, very much in a lean startup way. We've brought that and married it to the operating mindset internally in a company, which is very much about the rigor of goals and objectives, metrics, and everything else that you've got to have in place. Bringing those two talents together in the groups of corporate venture capital, working with some of the operators within our, our organizations has been very, very powerful. So when you take that, and you say, okay, now you've done that and you're starting to apply it in ways that is beyond equity investing. You're also bringing in this notion of creating new companies, creating partnerships between those ecosystems, doing more around licensing and technology ventures so that, in fact, you're figuring out how to create value from things that already exist. You start to look and you say, wow, you, you really are impacting corporate strategy foundationally. Because not only are you helping your fellow brethren in the corporation understand what's going on really in the ecosystems, you're connecting the dots so that in fact they can test it, they can understand whether it's going to work or not, and it allows for them to really look at the horizon of short-term, medium-term, and long-term strategies with the kind of disruption that's coming at you so very fast. So you are heroes of impact. You get to actually impact the corporation fundamentally in a very innovative way at the strategy level. And then you have proof points along the way that show the impact that you've actually created. That's why I call them heroes of impact. Just one extra question. In terms of diversity, do you think that in some question the, the impact issue is that if you've got maybe the wrong setup, you're backing the wrong entrepreneurs, or you've got the wrong investors thinking about it, not necessarily altruistically, but, you know, the, the impact therefore is not necessarily beneficial. There's a lot of talk about big tech and the impact they're having on society they didn't necessarily intend. How do you think the sort of the change in makeup of investors and the diversity and balance will, will sort of impact on what type of deals and what type of impact we have on society? That's a very broad question and very deep philosophically, but I'll do my best on <laughs> trying to answer it. First of all, I think we all believe that you must have diversity of perspective, period, because that's what makes the richest consideration and helps you get to the most robust solution. A lot of times those perspectives come from differences of experience, differences of background, differences of gender, differences of race, differences of ethnicity. And so diversity and inclusion is one that is very comprehensive. And it can be at the most basic level of just having diversity of perspective all the way to having the milieu and power of what our population actually represents and bringing those together as best as possible. One of the things around diversity and inclusion that I fundamentally believe is you never compromise for quality. But if you're not looking for that diverse perspective, then you are jipping yourself from having the best team. And that's just the reality of what's, I think, in the past potentially has happened. And more and more, I think people are looking and making sure that in their candidate pools, they have a, 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 a real, if you'd like, variety of perspectives that come from any one of the things that I've mentioned before, race, ethnicity, ethnicity gender, etc. And I think that's going to be very, very important. I also think that in this particular time, with so much that is being talked about under the hashtag MeToo and um, that movement, and this is not just an in investing, this is across our landscape, be it media, be it real estate, um, you know, uh, publishing, in so many different ways, in, in academia even, right, in, in, in our science organizations, what's happening is people are realizing it's real. And particularly men are as outraged as women have been. Because the courage of the women to speak up on these things um, has caused everyone to stand up and say, okay, 
And men, in particular, are saying, that's not acceptable. And that power of having both genders say it's not acceptable is impacting change in a way that we've just not seen in years. So that's something that I think is just going to be more and more important over time and going to become more and more accepted over time because everyone is realizing there is power in diversity and there is absolute intolerance of anything that could be at all um, unequal. In terms of how it affects the investments, I think the other part that has happened is you're going to see more women come into the investing world. You know, for the longest time, Sequoia didn't have a woman, and they've hired Jess to be their first woman partner. And you see that across the board, um, uh, you know, happening in most of the big financial firms. I think corporate venture capital has been very good about that, and you see the mix is almost 50-50 of women investors versus um, men. And certainly at GE Ventures, I'm really proud of what we have in terms of our diversity there. And then the last thing I'll say about it is women CEOs are stepping up to say they're going to go find the right alignment of value sets to go pitch to see if they can get um, funded. And I think that's going to increase the percentage of funding that you're going to see of women CEOs. And because the men are much more aware now, I think they're going to take a, a better look at some of the pitches and get much more engaged. So many things are happening. There's no one answer, but I think it's, we're moving in the right direction. That's wonderful to hear. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Sue.